Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting video 9.2 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This video discusses about how to perform balloon angioplasty step by step. Lesion preparation is the ninth of the 14 steps of PCI and balloon angioplasty is the most commonly used modality for providing lesion preparation. In video 9.1 there was a detailed description about when to actually perform lesion preparation, but in summary the vast majority of lesions should undergo lesion preparation with balloon angioplasty, with rare exception, for example, degenerated saphenous vein graft or vessels with small thrombus or balloon angioplasty might lead to distal embolization. Balloon angioplasty is performed in 13 steps. The first one is to confirm that the guide wire is in optimal position. Optimal means further distal in the vessel and also the tip of the wire should not be in a small branch as is the example here because that can lead to perforation. The second step is to confirm that the guide is aspirated and flushed. Usually there is back bleeding before inserting the balloons, there is aspiration of the guide catheter uh, before it is refilled with contrast. So one wants to ensure that the manifold is clean and there is no air anywhere in the guide or the manifold. The third step is to select the balloon size and the type. In general, the balloon should be sized 1-1 to the target vessel but can be smaller if it is difficult to advance across the lesion. The length should be less than the lesion length to avoid injuring additional vessel length that will subsequently require longer stent implantation. Non-compliant balloons are preferred because they can also be used for post dilatation. Also, monorail system is preferred to over the wire. It's much easier to advance them. And then plaque modification balloons might be advantageous in heavily calcified lesions. The balloon is then prepared by removing the air using a 50 to 50 uh, contrast selling ratio. It is important to get the air out of the balloon prior to connecting with the inflating device because in case of rupture if there is air in the balloon that will lead to vessel embolization and also may be more likely to predispose to perforation as well. Step number five is to load the balloon on the guide wire. This is typically done by holding the guide wire with uh, the thumb and the index finger of the left hand and then uh, essentially resting the tip of the wire on the middle finger of the left hand where the balloon is advanced and then is inserted over the wire. Using this approach makes it easier for the equipment, the balloon or any other equipment to advance over the guide wire. If there is difficulty inserting the balloon over the guide wire, then uh, the plunger of a syringe can be used, the groove can be used to align the balloon and the wire and facilitate insertion. Step number six is to advance through the wire connector. This is typically done with the assistant holding the back end of the wire and then the operator pushing the introducer and then inserting the balloon through the tube. Step number seven is to advance the balloon to the tip of the guide catheter. This can be assisted by markers which are placed at 90 and 100 centimeters from the balloon. If uh, the guide is short, 90 centimeters, as often used in retrograde CTO interventions, then the 90 centimeter marker should be the time when we should start performing fluoroscopy. For standard 100 centimeter long guides, then the 100 centimeter marker should be used. There can be sometimes resistance to advancing balloons through the guide catheter. For example, when there is guide extension, if there is guide kinking, if there is a lot of equipment in the guide, or if the guide wires have wrapped and there is multiple guide wires. And the solution is uh, to remove guide extension if that's the problem, remove some equipment if there is too much equipment in the guide, and then if the guide is kinked, replace it with a new guide catheter. Step number eight is to advance the balloon to the target lesion, and this can be a challenging step to achieve. There are two ways to do this. One is using the so-called two-hand technique, in which one hand is used to stabilize the guide wire, and then the other hand, typically the right hand, is used to push the balloon shaft into the vessel. The other option is to use the so-called independent hand technique, in which there is one hand, the right hand of the operator, 
that holds both the TUI as well as the balloon and, and the guide wire. And actually, is a, the operator is able with a single hand both advance the balloon as well as withdraw the balloon. This technique allows for the operator's left hand to be on the guide catheter and enhance the guide catheter support. Therefore, strongly recommend using the independent hand technique it provides much more flexibility and much more strength in delivering equipment, especially in hard to deliver situations. Sometimes it is difficult to advance the balloon to the lesion. And uh, there is a specific video, 9.3, discussing how to approach difficult balloon or stand delivery. Sometimes the balloon is not long enough to reach the target lesion. In those cases, balloons with long shaft can be used or short guide catheters that allow more reach with the existing shaft length. These are the various techniques that can be used to facilitate balloon and stand delivery. And again, this will be discussed in video 9.3. Another potential cause for difficultly advancing balloons, if there is a previous stand, is that the guide wire has gone in the substand area. Therefore, whenever wiring through previously standard vessels, it is best to use a knuckled guide wire to get through to minimize the likelihood of the wire going under the stand struts. How much to push? There is a fine balance there. If one pushes too hard, as in this particular case, then what can happen is that the guide position and the wire position can be lost. So there should be a balance. Don't push too hard because then the whole system can be lost. Another potential difficulty when delivering equipment is loss of visualization, as shown on, the, shown on the left panel. Here the stand is delivered, but the lesion is so tight, there is no visualization distal to the stand. The solution to this is to pull the stand back and then uh, while contrast is injected and fills the distal portion of the coronary artery, the stand is advanced and now there is visualization distally. Step number nine is to inflate the balloon. Typically, the inflation pressure is 12 to 14 atmospheres for compliant balloons and usually up to 20 atmospheres for non-compliant balloons. For cutting balloons, inflation should be very slow to allow unwrapping of the blades from the balloon folds. And then the duration should be more than 10 to 20 seconds. Some operators uh, use the end of later pressure indication indicator to see if uh, the inflation is long enough. If there continues to be drop in the pressure, that means that the vessel is expanding and therefore longer inflation is needed. Again, it's important to look at the end of later and uh, reach the target, the target pressure. What can go wrong during inflation? First of all, the balloon may rupture. If that happens, suction should be applied immediately. The balloon should be removed, the guide aspirated, and then an angiogram should be performed because balloon rupture may actually lead to vessel perforation, which is important to determine quickly, identify quickly, and treat quickly. Another potential challenge is the so-called watermelon seeding effect in which the balloon uh, slips uh, either proximal or distal to the target lesion. The ways to avoid this is by slow balloon inflation, potentially having a gentle traction or push, using one or more body wires, using a plaque modification balloon, such as the angiosculpt or the chocolate or the cutting balloon, and use a longer balloon. There is also the possibility that the balloon fails to expand. These are the balloon and dilatable lesions that will be discussed in detail in video 23.2. Step number 10 is to deflate the balloon. Complete deflation should be achieved before withdrawing the balloon and some balloons are faster to deflate than others. Also, if there is more contrast in the mixture, the deflation may take longer. If uh, the balloon does not deflate fully before withdrawal, there is the possibility of uh, the balloon remaining inflated, have some damage to the balloon, and being unable to completely deflate the balloon. Step number 11 is to withdraw the balloon into the guide catheter. Once again, it is critical to ensure that the balloon is fully deflated, because if not, trying to withdraw the still partially inflated balloon will lead to deep seating of the guide catheter, that can cause dissections or other complications. 
Again, this can be done with the independent hand technique that can adjust also the guide position, preventing the deep seating, deep engagement of the guide caster and the associated complications. Step, step number 12 is to remove the balloon. Uh, this is done using both hands uh, over the wire. It can be sometimes difficult to do because um, uh, of high pressure inflations can make the balloon sticky or maybe the guide wire is sticky or there's some kinking of the guide wire or some wrapping of the guide wire. So to prevent issues with losing guide wire position while removing the balloon, it is important to wipe the wire very carefully before removal, perform small movements. And this is the configuration I personally prefer. I pull the balloon back using the left hand while fixing the guide wire with the right hand. Again, small movement, and if it is very hard to pull the balloon back, then performing fluoroscopy during withdrawal of the balloon can help ensure that the guide wire is not moving during the guide wire and the balloon removal process. And the final step is to check the result of balloon angioplasty with angiography and or intravascular imaging before proceeding with standing. So balloon angioplasty is performed in 13 steps performing very methodically each of those steps and knowing the potential challenges and potential complications can help optimize performance of balloon angioplasty. Thank you.